Hello, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us for Access City Council. I'm your host, City of Las Vegas Communications Director, David Riggleman. Coming up on this show, it's a desert out there. Be water smart. It's a slogan we've heard many times here in Southern Nevada. Today, we'll discuss the issue of water and what's being done to keep it flowing for us. Joining us with more on this important topic is our Ward 6 City Councilwoman. You know who it is. Nancy Bruni, welcome back to the show, Councilwoman. Good How morning, are you? David, great, thank you. Of course, you represent Ward 6 right at yes. the top of the valley. You know it very well. Uh, for those of you out there not exactly sure where Ward 6 is located, well, have no fear. We're going to show you on the map. Of course, appropriately enough, it's that area right at the top of our valley uh, with the 6 on it. Of course, if you live in that area or work in that area, then you are in the city limits of the city of Las Vegas. And if you're a resident out there, you are represented on the city council by Nancy Bruni. Important topic today. We're going to talk about water, Councilwoman. Yes. Uh, as Southern Nevada continues to grow, water continues to be a critical issue in our community. No surprise there. Councilwoman Bruni brought a special guest with us today to join this conversation. Please uh, welcome to the program. We will, and you too out there. Uh, we have John Ensminger. He's the general manager of the Las Vegas Valley, Valley Water District, the Southern Nevada Water Authority. John, welcome to the program. Uh, you're no stranger to the studio here. You've been on Hello Mayor a few times. Uh, you're sort of the man of the hour when it comes to water. And Councilwoman, I, I, one of the things, I, and I know this is a critical issue for you because your ward is one of the wards that's seeing some of the most uh, growth at yeah. this point. Uh, and of course, the question is, if water's an issue, how are we continuing to grow? And I know that's a dilemma that we face here. In yes, Nevada. yes, I will share that um, wards four and ward six do have the most growth right now. And when I was out knocking on doors, and even monthly when I have my book, I eat those with Bruni meetings, mm -hmm. You know, there's always a question about water. You know, why are why is our water bill so high? But more importantly, how do we keep building if we are in drought conditions? And so um, I was very pleased that John, who really does probably needs no introduction because he's been with the Southern Nevada Water Authority for 25 years and so really knows this topic better than anybody else. Yeah, um, it's a pleasure so. to have you on, John. Thank you so much. And to the councilwoman's point, I know it's a question we get here at the city. I'm sure it's when you get everywhere you go. Um, it seems sort of counterintuitive. If water's an issue, how are we still building? A um, little, little, little more complicated than that, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it definitely is more complicated than that. Um, and people, I, I think, in their minds, they just correlate, you know, more people, more homes, more businesses with higher water consumption. Uh, and that's really not the case. In 2023, was our lowest water use as a region uh, in 30 years. Um, just if you look at the last four years, um, from 2020 to today, we've added approximately 60,000 new connections to the valley. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's Henderson, North Las Vegas, City of Las Vegas, yeah, unincorporated yeah. County, and one new connection could be a new house. Mm -hmm. One new connection could be the new Durango Station. So it's really encompassing right. all the growth that has occurred but at the same four year time period that we've added those 60,000 new connections, we've decreased our overall water usage by 26%. Yeah. So as we've put new codes in place, as we've learned to grow with either a zero or even negative water footprint, that's what has allowed us to live within our means and continue our economic diversification. Yeah. Can, can I ask you a question? Because I get this uh, a lot from folks. Is it, are there certain types of housing that will use less water. Um, so you know, I've heard that one of the arguments for maybe building up in apartments or multi-layered townhomes is in fact that you will use less water than say a, you know, a home on a acre lot or half acre lot. And so it, it almost makes the, the case for building apartments or building higher density, right? To again, capture those gains in water usage. I think in times go, gone by, that might have been true, but the way uh, we've set things up now in new construction, when you build a new single family home now, you can't put any grass in the backyard or in the front yard. You can only have a 600 square foot swimming pool. And that's true if you're you know, in a track home in Summerland, and that's true if you're on a, a four acre lot in the summit. You know, mm -hmm. those same rules apply to everyone. So new homes are incredibly more efficient mm -hmm. uh, than the older homes that were built here in the, you know, the 70s, 80s, 90s. And the same is true of businesses. Now that we have a, a moratorium on evaporative cooling, uh, no new grass at all can be installed in commercial. That's why you see those numbers of, you know, adding 60,000 new connections and water usage actually declining. Yeah. 
John, in a previous life, uh, you're well aware, uh, I was the conservation manager at the Water Authority and uh, Las Vegas Valley Water District. And when I started in that job, we had the moniker of being the biggest water wasters around. You know, Las Vegas was excessive and that conservation was something that we just didn't even consider here. Now, fast forward all these years later, and all of a sudden, we have emerged as the conservation leaders, not only of the country, but conservation leaders of the world. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about um, how that happened. I'm certainly, it wasn't just <laughs> any of the work that I did all, <laughs> all those years ago. I'd like to take all the credit. Unfortunately, I, I won't. Um, but things changed, John. And what took place? How did we go from being so, quote unquote, wasteful to being so efficient over all these years? Um, well, first, just kind of give people the idea of the actual numbers, right? In 2002, uh, we used 325,000 acre feet of water from the Colorado River. Last year in 2023, we used 187,000 wow. acre wow. feet from wow. the Colorado yes. River. Yeah. So not quite well, half, but yeah. has, you know, you know, we so we've added 800,000 ish people over the last 21 years, and our water consumption is down 40 percent. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. But what I would tell everyone is, that when it comes to water conservation, there's no silver bullet, but there is silver buckshot. <laughs> and so you have to take advantage of every single opportunity. No, exactly what you mean. You yeah. have to, you know, go after the non-functional turf and get rid of grass that nobody's kids or grandkids are, are playing on. You have to make new construction incredibly efficient. You have to put golf courses uh, onto to water budgets. You have to limit swimming pool sizes even for billionaires. And if you do everything, then the entire community uh, can continue to be economically uh, vibrant mm -hmm. uh, and live within our relatively small water allocation. Now, I've noticed that we you have uh, recently increased the dollar amount for the rebate on converting non-functional grass to you know desert landscaping. Mm -hmm. What prompted that? Five dollars a square foot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was three dollars. Yeah. So we were just about yeah. to convert, and we heard the great news. And so, oh. We were trying to keep it a secret. No, actually, we're not trying to keep it a secret. We want everybody to know because, yeah, the Southern Nevada Water Authority's board of directors um, just last month uh, agreed to increase for single-family residential only the the rebate from three dollars a square foot to five dollars a square foot just for 2024. Oh wow! Now. That doesn't mean you heard it here. Got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't mean we won't carry it forward, but we got a, a one-time mm -hmm. uh, funding source uh, from the state of Nevada, and then the balance of what it will re be required will be paid by SNWA. So we'd really like people to, you know, John, clarify that a little bit. I mean, for every square foot uh, of turf that you remove, you're going to get a five-dollar rebate out there. Yeah. That's a pretty good deal. You and, know? and if you're putting in relatively normal landscaping, that five bucks a square foot will come very close to paying for the entire Absolutely. conversion. Now, if you're getting, you know, 50 gallon blue agaves and right, <laughs> right, mature yeah. trees, yeah. Uh, it, it, it may not, you know, cover the full cost, but it, it should come very close. Yeah, very, very wow. true. Uh, John, talk about this too. Uh, I know Councilwoman's heard this. Uh, we hear this at the city. Uh, people have lived here for many years. It's like, well, I don't want to give up my turf. You know, I've been in this house for decades. My water bill's always been pretty reasonable. Um, I, I want to hang on to my turf. I don't want to get rid of it. Kind of what's the message that you would uh, that you would have for them? Well, you know, when the Assembly and Senate and uh, the state government signed AB 356, it exempted existing homes. So there's no mandate that you take out your grass at, you know, in your existing home. And, you know, our meter data shows that if you don't have leaks and you follow the watering schedule, your water bill is still, you know, pretty, you know, normal. Good to point out. But, but if you have leaks in your landscaping, uh, if you water, you know, far more than is actually required for your, your turf and your trees, that's what's gonna lead to higher water bills. Yeah, for sure. You know, Councilwoman, I know one of the things we hear too, and I know it's frustrating for Southern Nevadans, is that I think we feel like there's not a fair allocation of water. Our water comes from, obviously from the Colorado River primarily, but you see California gets this huge amount, Arizona gets a large amount, and yet here we are, a growing city, in one of the major cities in the United States, probably one of the uh, iconic cities clearly of the entire world, and yet we get this little allocation of water. 
I know that's, that seems unfair. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's one of the questions, John, that you know, councilwoman, uh, council members get here mm -hmm. here at the city. How come there seems to be this disparity in the allocation of water? Can anything be done about it? Mm -hmm. um, there is a disparity and things are being done. Uh, so let me unpack that a little bit. You know, the reason it is the way it is is because the, the Colorado was divided up between seven states in 1922 when the population of Clark County was about 5,000 people. Yeah. Uh, also, we didn't have any agriculture here. The most water from the Colorado in all seven states, except for Nevada, was went to agriculture. And that's why they have a larger legal entitlement than we do. And people always say, well, let's renegotiate that. Let's change that. Yeah. Functionally, legally, what that would take is seven state legislatures, seven governors, the House of Representatives, the Senate, and the President. It's easy wow. then. So <laughs> all, 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 also, <laughs> all, also six states can take less and uh, one state can take more. That's not a path that's going to do us any good to, to go down. But what we have been able to do is negotiate with the other six states to add 30,000 acre feet, 10% to our allocation uh, by being able to move water from the Virgin to Muddy Rivers through Lake Lee Mead to our intakes here. We're partnering with the Metropolitan Water District of Southern California on what they call their Pure Water Project, which for our investment in that project, they'll leave a portion of California's water in Lake Mead for our use. Uh -huh. So we are adding to our supplies uh, at the same time we've been so successful in driving down our demands. Yeah. Because speaking of disparities, I, you know, I'm I'm on next door a lot, listening to my yeah. neighbors, and so, you know, a lot of some of the perception from our neighbors is that, sort of, you know, the the residents are footing a lot of the bill and making a lot of sacrifices, and our businesses sort of are are not uh, maybe under the same. That's a great question. Yeah, great. We, and we do hear that. Yeah. yeah. When I was out, you know, again knocking on doors, I said, you know, if I'm elected, I'd love to ha see like a water audit tool where every business is required to sort of let people know how much water they're going to be consuming. And lo and behold, I just found out a couple of months ago that Southern Nevada Water Authority has actually launched a water um, a water tool for businesses. So I'd love to to have you share a little bit about what that is and how that's working and sure. you know, the impact. <clears throat> well, I guess the first thing I would say is I do feel like the business community is given at the office, you know, so to speak, because with the evaporation on uh, moratorium on evaporative cooling, uh, with a number of other things, the business community themselves, all the grass in commercial is required to be taken out by the end of 2026. You know, so they're footing a lot of, of that bill as well. So it has been that sort of, you know, all of the above approach. But it, when it comes to the water investment tool that we developed with the Las Vegas Global Economic Alliance and the governor's office for economic development, it evaluates exactly what you're saying, Councilwoman, that, you know, are you a huge user of water that's inappropriate in the Mojave Desert? Then. You know, no, no, no thanks, right? Not only are you not going to get any tax abatements, but we would really encourage the municipalities to not even permit that. And then you have things all the way over here, a desert radiology that has zero water consumption. And you're like, check, go right ahead. And then you're going to have stuff in the middle, right, right. right? Where you want to evaluate, okay, it uses some water, but is it a societal good, mm -hmm. right? Is it it's a, employing is, like 3,000 people? It, it, right. How much does it employ? Yeah. What is the average wage? Is it a, a need sure. the community has a children's hospital that you absolutely like? Yes, we need a children's hospital in Southern Nevada. So let, let's build that. And it takes all of those factors into account, gives you a water score, gives you a societal score, and tries to help inform yeah. elected officials on, you know, whether or not it's a good fit for the yeah. community. How many businesses have gone through that process thus far? I mean, almost everyone that uh, either LVGEA or GOED is looking at giving tax abatements to. That was the first use of it. So, you know, you know, dozens, you know, at, at least. Uh, and we're just now getting, you know, with the economic development offices in each of the municipalities to, to try to get them yeah. using it on a daily basis. It's like checking your finances before you go yeah. buy a car. You know, you got to have the money there. And what's the impact going to be if I get this versus <clears throat> that? And that's what you're doing with this. It's like we bring these businesses in. What's that going to do to the to our bottom line when it comes to water? Mm -hmm. John, we're starting to run out of time here with you. It's been a, a wonderful conversation. Give people some perspective as we look into the future. Uh, some people, you know, we hear it's doomsday. We're going to be running out of water, you know, by the next generation. 
Others are saying, no, no, if we're efficient, if we do things right, we've got, uh, you know, a very healthy uh, future ahead of us as far as being able to sustain uh, our, our, our growth and our, and our uh, livability here. What, what's your take on, on what the future looks like for us? Well, first of all, it, it's a real problem and it's a serious problem. You know, as the impacts of climate change manifest themselves with warmer temperatures, especially in the Rocky Mountains, you're going to see more of that snowpack evaporate and go directly to gas and less of it turn to liquid and, and get into the stream channel. So that's a real thing that there will be less water in the Western United States, you know, in the coming decades. However, I firmly believe, as we've demonstrated here in Southern Nevada, that we have the tools to adapt to that. It means agriculture is going to have to be more efficient. It means all the cities are going to have to be as efficient as Las Vegas has become. And it means Las Vegas' journey isn't over yet. We do a 50-year resource plan every year, so we always have a five-decade security blanket to make sure we can tell the community that we have a safe and secure water supply. Uh, but conservation is a journey. It's not a destination, and, and we're not done yet. All right. Hey, good point. Good point. John, we're about out of time. Councilwoman, uh, uh, Councilwoman, I'll give you, and then John will pass over John final word on anything you'd like to add. Well, I think it's clear from this conversation that the Southern Nevada Water Authority is doing a great job. And again, kudos to, to John as you celebrate your 10 years <laughs> as the general manager, because I think you know you were clearly established or have continued the good work that Pat started, um, but Nevada remains a leader in the country and in the world in terms of managing uh, our water resources and um, being part of those collaborative conversations. So thank you. Oh, absolutely, thank you guys. And, and I would just thank the community, right? This isn't the Southern Nevada Water Authority, you know, being able to just wave a magic wand and, you know, be a global leader in water conservation. It's the community of Southern Nevada uh, that's come together, the member agencies of the Water Authority. The Water Authority is only our seven members, including, you know, the city of Las Vegas. So without that sort of unanimity, you know, of the the body politic, we just wouldn't have been able to do what we've done. Well, I would say that's a really good point because I've been in so many conversations about regional issues, whether it be transportation or housing or how we spend our opioid settlement funds. And, you know, um, I would say, I think around the issue of water, there actually has been amazing collaboration. So thank you for saying that because I think we're, we're sometimes, we sometimes struggle in the other areas. So again, that gives us a great model to use to then build that collaboration um, in other areas. Yeah. And I'd add to that too, John, I think that you guys have done a great job getting kind of the mindset of the community to shift a little bit about, I think the average Las Vegas resident understands the criticality of water. And uh, mm -hmm. when I first moved to town, it wasn't that way, it, it is now. And, and again, that's a credit to the work that the, the, the agency's done, so. Well, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you for getting us started. It's my, my pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for keeping it going all these years. Obviously you did much better than when I was there for sure. So, John, it's been a pleasure having you on the program. Thank you so much. Uh, and Councilwoman, we're going to have you stick around. Uh, we need to take a short break, everyone. But when we come back, we still have a lot to talk about uh, about upcoming events in Ward mm -hmm. 6. So mm -hmm. that's right after this. <laughs> This is what too much sounds like. This is what stress feels like. And this is what help feels like. If you've lost a job, worry about your next meal, or have trouble making it through the day, we can help. Text STRESS to 211211 to find a solution. Welcome back, everyone. We are talking everything Ward 6 with Councilwoman Nancy Bruni. And Councilwoman, you have some great events coming up that we want to make sure people know about and, and, and can partake in. And the first is, um, it's just, uh, appropriately enough, uh, you have a senior heart safety event. This is going to be on Monday, February 12th from 10 to 11 at Centennial Hills Active Adult Center. And of course, um, February is... Uh, American Heart Month. Exactly right, yeah. American Heart Month. So yeah. uh, perfect timing on all of Yeah, this is the second year we did this last year. I think I'd just been in office maybe two months when we did it. It was a great turnout. I think we had 40 or 50 seniors there. We had some great raffle prizes. So come on out and, and win the, or 
try for an opportunity to win an amazing raffle basket that Christy puts together. Oh, that's, a that's a deal. Um, and then we have, um, usually we have someone from Metro come out and talk about safety and offer some safety tips, Excellent. as well as Las Vegas Fire and Rescue. Um, um, their specialist comes out just to talk about, again, health um, health safety tips. Right. You know, it's so important. Uh, Review Journal recently had a story. Uh, they had done a review of um, what the coroner's office had reviewed as causes of death through 2023. And the oh. leading cause of death in Southern Nevada is cardiovascular, uh, cardiovascular mm. disease. Mm. So being heart healthy, uh, calling attention, raising awareness, councilwoman, is very important because that was the single biggest killer of people in Southern wow. Nevada. Um, wow. And uh, so you gotta have Got to have good, healthy heart. Yeah, and there's stay. some really great tips. So last year, uh, Las Vegas Fire and Rescue, Melanie Dannon came out and shared, gave actually gave out free packets where she was encouraging our seniors to um, fill out these forms and write out their health information mm -hmm. and what their allergies are, and then put them on their uh, in their window and then maybe on their back, on their front door, on the the back. Because you know, think about it, when you call 911 and there's an emergency. You know, you may be unconscious if you know you've sure, had sure. a heart attack, right? And and 911, the you know the uh, paramedics won't be able to know you know what you're allergic to if you have a pre-existing right. condition. So um, they know to look for those envelopes with your health history in them. And so they advice. usually know to look in the window Great or on advice. the back door. And so we'll be handing out those free of charge, and Melanie can walk our seniors Excellent. through like how to fill it out and what it means. All right. Everybody, again, that's going to be on uh, February 12th from 10 to 11 at the Centennial Hills Active Adult Center. That's at uh, 6601 North Buffalo Drive. Want to check out that? We know that the show airs over the course of the week, so some of you may have already missed the event, but that's okay because we'll have others uh, down the road in the future, other health events uh, uh, to, to raise the, those types of awarenesses. And then, Councilwoman, this is a big one. You have a pickleball tournament coming up on Saturday, February 17th. And this is just no average pickleball <laughs> tournament. This is the Ward 2 Councilwoman, uh, I'm sorry, Ward 4, Ward four Councilwoman <laughs> versus the Ward 6 Councilwoman squaring off with their husbands for bragging rights. And, um, you know, we, we both know that Councilwoman Polensky very competitive, competitive. Yes. yeah just a yes. smidge <laughs> so she's taking this seriously everyone so if you want to come out between a nine and three that day saturday the 17th the ymca at durango hills community center what time is the the grudge match going to take place do you i know? think it's scheduled for a, around 11 okay. but we'll play by ear in case you know right. media comes out and i think we are full i think we had slots for 80 people so wow. the good news is it's already received a lot of interest um because we want to do this event yearly and next year the goal is to have it back in ward six and alternate between the two uh -huh. wards but even if you want to come out um, and there's no longer a spot we're still offering free pickleball clinics so if you've always wanted to learn but don't know you know how to to do it um it will provide a safe friendly fun environment to come out and and um get some tips from our professionals this sport is I'm sure you're well aware unless you've been somewhere in, in you know, on the other side of the moon this is just taken off as a yeah. huge huge popular sport yeah. in southern nevada and across the the entire country yeah yeah and i know councilman alan plensky is getting some pickleball courts i think and i will tell you we opened up two new pickleball courts behind the centennial hills library a couple of months ago maybe back in september i've driven by twice now and there's always at least one sometimes two courts open so if you're looking for a pickleball court um, please know that there usually is open space Whoa. or open court at the two new pickleball courts behind. Pickleballers, did you hear that? So. That, that that's, that's a very <laughs> well kept here, secret. Yes. Yeah, because uh, yeah, it's sometimes hard to find access yes. to a court now yeah. because it is really really popular. Mm -hmm. So all right. So anyway, uh, now Councilwoman, the winner of the grudge match between you and Councilwoman <laughs> Polanski and and uh, your husbands, what uh, what is the what what's the prize? What's the the winner get? I we haven't discussed it, okay. but I'm going to vote for uh, sort of a homemade Mexican dinner okay. because uh, Councilwoman Alan Polanski's husband makes an amazing spicy uh -huh. margarita, uh -huh. and so and, and great Mexican food. So hopefully, I'm pretty sure we're going to win. So then I'm going to ask for a homemade Mexican food dinner with some spicy. I see margaritas. So we can tell the Polanskis too that you guys have been practicing. You are yes. ready to go. Um, <laughs> your your forehand, backhand, it's just it's 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 like a rocket. So look out out there, Polanskis. These guys have been they're they're ready for you. And then uh, Councilman, last but not least, uh, another shredding event coming up uh, Saturday, March second, uh, from ten to noon at the YMCA Centennial Hills Community Center again. 
6601 North Buffalo. These events, especially around tax time, uh, just <laughs> seem to get more and more popular. I, I, I remember when we first started doing these years ago, I, I kind of kind of chuckled. It's like, well, who's going to come out to one of these things? Well, identity theft became more of an issue. Mm. And next thing you know, we had lines of people around the centers uh, waiting to dump yep. their, their uh, old documents. Yeah, we had people back in December asking when our next event was. And I know Councilman Alan Polinsky just had 400 people at her Incredible. event a couple of weeks ago. But I wanted to tell people, like, you can go to a shredding event anywhere. You don't have to Absolutely. go in our ward. And so I know back in November, we had just had hours, but North Las Vegas was having a shredding yep. event. So I always try to get on next door and let people know where the next You're one is. very good about that. Um, because you don't have to just come to the ones in Ward 6. Exactly. I don't know if people know that. So. And Councilwoman, let's give them some tips, too. When you come out, it's important you don't have batteries or cell phones. We actually had cell phones get yeah. thrown in. Uh, big clips, you know, yeah. uh, on on on, uh, on some on of those old, bind yeah, yeah. Yeah, old binders. Yeah, binders. you got to take the paper out of all of that. Yeah. Uh, staples are okay, but paper clips and, and those types mm -hmm. of things, please remove if you yep. don't mind, because it can mess up the equipment yep. uh, for the for the shredding machine. Don't yeah. want that to happen. So, And uh, Councilwoman, too, with tax season coming up, if you've got old documents, especially with your social security number, name and address, it's, it's be careful what you do with that. And it's mm -hmm. a great way to just get rid of it. And uh, it's pulverized into little, it's little almost tiny like confetti. Pieces. Yeah, yeah so you can small. make confetti, yeah. Exactly. And, uh, the paper then goes to a good cause uh, uh, once it's recycled. So um, that's that's what becomes of it. Hmm. So be careful with those documents. So again, it's going to be on March 2nd out there. So, all right. Well, Councilwoman, we are about out of time here, but I want to thank you. Uh, we want to tell everybody out there, hey, we always want to hear from you. So if there's something you'd like to share with Councilwoman Bruni, you can find her on Facebook and X. You can also contact her just by picking up the phone, 702-229-6405 or send her an email. Her address is nbruni at lasvegasnevada.gov. And she or one of her great staff, Mateo or Blanca, will get right back to you. <laughs> you know, I'll so. tell you, very few people actually reach out at the direct email. It mostly comes through our Ward 6 at lasvegasnevada.gov, which okay. is great because then you have a few of us putting eyes on your request and responding pretty quickly. That's the, the, the advantage. When you send it to that email yep. group, then it's not coming to just one individual. It's coming to the whole group, and mm -hmm. a lot of eyes are going to see it, and your response will be a lot faster then. Yeah. So, yeah. Yep. All right, Councilwoman, great job. Uh, we'll have you back in six weeks with another mm -hmm. update from Ward 6. The uh, the big tournament will have happened by yes. then. So we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll have to hear how that all turned out. And um, I think we've actually got really cute uh, pickleball uh, tournament um, st trophies. There, there, yeah. there you go. Yeah. There you are. All right. <laughs> and, uh, and I think it's going to end up at the Bruni House with all the, the practice you guys have put in. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> folks, we want to thank you so much uh, for joining us. Our next Axis City Council show begins airing on February 15th with Ward City Councilman and Mayor Pro Tem Brian Knudsen. You can now catch all of our KCLV shows on Apple TV, Roku, and Amazon Fire. And watch for our QR code in the closing credits of this show to subscribe to our newsletter. And also don't forget, you can watch us live on the internet at kclv.tv. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time around.